The spread footing is a structural element that supports a column and it spreads the load to the supporting soil in such a way that the bearing pressures are under the allowable limits. The column usually transfers vertical loads, but it may also have horizontal loads in each direction and also bending moments about the, the main axis. So this is a biaxial bending condition. If the column is eccentric, this will create additional moments equal to the vertical load times the offset in its direction. So these additional moments due to the eccentric location of the column on the footing will be added to the moments applied directly to the column. This is Javier Encinas. And today we're gonna to discuss the complexities in the biaxial bending analysis in footings. Let's get started. Clearly the distribution of the bearing pressures under the footing will depend on both the applied vertical load and also the total bending moments transferred to the footing. For this reason, it's better to use the eccentricity defined as the moment over vertical load, M over P, to understand better the effects of the biaxial bending on a spread footing design. When the eccentricities are small, 100% of the footing will be in contact with the soil. This is a typical condition of most footings in practice. As eccentricities increase, one corner of the footing may be not in contact with the soil, so only the blue area is a contact area. This is called a type 2 footing. The type 3 has two corners not in contact with the soil, and type 4 has three corners not in contact with the soil. This chart shows the relationship between eccentricities in both directions. This triangle at the bottom represents the kern, which means that if the eccentricities fall in this area here, represent the type one, you know, the 100% of the area will be in contact with soil. As eccentricities increase, could be type two or type three, these two types, and finally type four over here. Sometimes it's necessary to design type two footings or even type three, depending on the situation. For example, if you are designing a footing, but you have existing footings in the area, well, the size of the footing is limited by the geometrical constraints. Or for example, if you are checking an existing footing for new higher loads, maybe the footing now is a type two or type three, even when originally it was type one. So these conditions apply sometimes in practice as well. The calculation of the bearing pressure is relatively simple for type one footing because it can be done with uh, known formulas, can be done by hand. But for type two, three or four, the calculation is much more complex, mainly because the shape of the effective area of the footing is unknown and the calculation is very complex and very involved. When you create a calculation in ASDIP foundation for a spread footing, this is the typical form. In this left side, you enter all the information and in the right side, you see the results. I have created a footing to uh, illustrate the point of uh, biaxial bending. Basically, this is a footing 12 by eight and the column is eccentric. I have applied some loads dead loads, 100 kips vertical. Even for this condition, with this eccentricity, we can see that the, there's a small portion of the corner that is not in contact with soil. So this is actually a type two footing, even when this area is really small, but it's a type two. If we increase the moments, for example, if we go increasingly, say 30 kip feet, we can see that the area that is not in contact with soil increases as well. We can also add in the other moment in the other direction as well, and so on. For example, you increase it a little bit more. So for example, in this condition, we can see all this corner is not in contact with the soil. So this effective area, the blue area, is only the area that is considered in the calculations. As the foundation has an algorithm that uh, calculates the bearing pressure for this condition, so he finds that the maximum bearing pressure here is 4 KSF. This is a zero, zero line, but at the corner 1.7 and 0 
KSF. For the one-way shear, the calculation is very complex as well. The shear is produced by the bearing pressure acting upwards to the footing. This is the uh, critical section, which is typically at a distance D from the column face, each side in one direction and in the other direction, distance D. Basically, the shear force along the critical section is the volume of this shape, which is delimited by the footing itself, the critical section, and the bearing pressure underneath. You can see that this shape is irregular, both in plan and in elevation. The volume calculation of these irregular shapes is not easy if you do it by hand, as the foundation uses a series of uh, integrals to calculate the volume of these shapes. For the punching shear, it's the same situation. You need to calculate the volume of the bearing pressure under this area here, as the foundation calculates correctly this number. The calculation of the bending moments at the footing is even more complicated. The bending moments are equal to the volume of this shape times the distance from the centroid to the critical section, which is uh, the column face. That applies in this direction, direction Z, or in direction X. Calculating the centroid of these irregular shapes is very complicated as the foundation calculates the centroids and volumes internally very efficiently. In summary, when a footing is subject to biaxial bending and the eccentricities are small, the footing will be 100% in contact with the soil and the footing will be relatively easy to design. But when the eccentricities are larger, you may have this condition, for example, when a one corner is not in contact with soil, so the effective area the blue area here will be difficult to calculate by hand. Furthermore, when you need to calculate the one-way shear at the critical section, the resulting shapes are irregular and the volume of those sections are difficult to calculate by hand as well. The same applies for the punching shear. In flexure, the bending moment along the critical section is equal to the volume of the shape times the distance from the centroid to the critical section. Fortunately, the algorithm in ASIC Foundation helps to calculate these shapes, forces, volumes, centroids, moments, and shears very quickly and efficiently. Thank you for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notification about similar videos in the future. Thank you very much.